everybody welcome and welcome back again to yet another Poland reaction video my name is Cynthia and yes beautiful people in today's video we're going right again into Poland I don't know what this interest about Poland is about but trust and believe your girl is stuck on Poland for now <laughs> for now <laughs> so yes guys in today's video I'm going to be looking at how Poland is preparing for war. What I find interesting about this video, even though I haven't gone into it already, is the fact that their country is already preparing for war. Like, they're already preparing for Yes, I understand that countries need to be on standby to protect its citizens, you know, and the rest, but... They're preparing for war guys like they're literally preparing for war okay 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 guys let's see what this video is about before i give you my two cents on what i think okay all right beautiful people without further ado let us get right into this video this is poland once the tragic crossroad of european empires it has undergone nothing short of a western military renaissance in the 21st century and is now becoming one of the most feared armies in europe Yep, Look you heard that. that right. Poland has become a military beast and Putin really should think twice before deciding to poke this fully staffed, well-armed and exceptionally trained bear. The ongoing war in Ukraine has undeniably influenced Poland's military posture. But Look with the flurry that. of spending increases, arms deals and recruitment programs, what exactly is Poland gearing up for and will it be prepared? After what Poland's been through in recent history, Trying to pull uh, off a modern yeah. military revival is no joke. Within the span of a yeah. single lifetime, the Polish nation waded through shattering, simultaneous military defeats at the hands of both Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union. A wartime occupation, partitioning, and tragic holocaust, and its complete absorption into the Warsaw Pact as a Soviet satellite for the 40 years that followed. Talk about trauma. During the latter Cold War period, Poland's population doubled. It maintained a decently large standing army, often joined by Soviet troops stationed within its territory. The oh. Eastern Bloc country, led by unapologetic communist officials closely aligned with Stalin's regime, nevertheless managed to rebuild its devastated cities in the aftermath of World War II, slowly oh. raising the standard of living among its inhabitants. Over time, hardline Stalinists fell from power, followed closely by many ousted Soviet officers who had for decades filled leadership positions throughout the Polish army. The 1970s and 80s ushered in an era of turbulent protests and political change. The rise of Solidarity, a widely popular anti-communist social movement, preceded mass pushback to and the eventual breakdown of Soviet authority in Poland. The Poles wanted freedom and eventually took it. By 1991, the dissolution of the Soviet Union created the conditions for democratic elections, Poland's first since 1920. This landmark moment was to be Poland's first major step in its inexorable civil-military transformation, one that would see the nation progressively look westward for models upon which it could base its rapidly developing economic, military, and political systems. Poland's Western integration scared the pants off enemy soldiers, and on September 18, 1993, Soviet troops left the country for good. Just five years later in 1999, Poland officially joined NATO. Five years after that, it joined the EU. But Poland what? trying to come besties with the West is not a new story. Today, many people forget that though Poland was ravaged by the Axis early on in World War II, its armies in exile fled Soviet gulags and went on to fight gallantly as pilots, sailors and soldiers within the Allied armies abroad. With hundreds of thousands of Poles voluntarily serving in Italy and on the Eastern Front, they fought with hope that they might someday rebuild Poland from the ashes. A new Poland, one free from the tyranny of coercive foreign regimes. Poland followed this North Star as it cast away the vestiges of Soviet control in the new millennium. Ever since, it has progressively sought to become a self-sufficient, independent power in its own right. Even before it joined the EU, Poland sent 2,000 soldiers to participate in the 2003 invasion of Iraq, then the coalition's fourth largest military contribution behind the United States, the United Kingdom and Australia. Poland maintained its presence in Iraq for years, participating in and even leading multinational division Central South, a NATO unit responsible oh. for an entire occupation zone as part of multinational force Iraq. Their deployment lasted until 2008, when Polish troops were finally withdrawn from the country, but Iraq was just the beginning. In Afghanistan too, Poland signaled its solidarity with the West. 
There for the duration of the 20-year Forever War, the Poles proved themselves reliable, trustworthy partners, cycling through more than 33,000 personnel in what constituted the largest peacekeeping mission in Poland's military history. We're telling you, you want these guys to be on your side. But don't take our word for it. Western veterans of these two wars whose tours of duty brought them into contact wow. with their Polish allies almost unanimously praised their martial prowess, professionalism, and battlefield capabilities. Each additional year spent as part of NATO's multinational deployments increased Poland's military effectiveness, interoperability, and trustworthiness. With certain pundits labeling Poland an emergent protégé of the United States in Central and Eastern Europe, the nation has more than demonstrated its unity with other NATO allies, as well as its approval and support of American security policies. Since 1989, each successive Polish government has supported America's forward military presence in Europe, seeing in their ally a source of protection, friendship, and economic prosperity it so desperately lacked throughout its fraught history. Poland has repeatedly been one of few NATO countries willing to fulfill their obligations to spend 2% of their GDP on defense spending, a point of friction between the US and its other NATO like, allies in is, recent years. With amicable relations blowing. deteriorating between Poland's current right-wing government and President Joe Biden, who won the presidency in 2020, Russia's invasion of Ukraine caused a resurgence in Polish-American relations. Ever since, the two countries have reaffirmed their commitment to each other and to their shared desire to arm Ukraine with the weapons it needs to succeed. Great, everyone's getting along. Now let's get down to business and talk about geostrategy and okay. tanks. The latest landmark decision here. to finally send main battle tanks to Ukraine has renewed attention on the United States and Germany. In reality, Ukraine owes much of the decision's outcome to Poland, who was one of the first countries to pressure a reticent Berlin into increasing its support for Ukraine by asking for approval to transfer its own German-made Leopard 2 tanks. Talk about heart. Jeopardizing its own diplomatic wow. relationship with its German neighbor, Poland acted as a catalyst for consensus, eventually deciding to send its Leopards to Ukraine even without explicit German consent. Arguably, this choice helped bring Berlin and the rest of the West into agreement on the issue. It also demonstrated Poland's proactive leadership role as a vocal opponent of Russian aggression, warnings it has been issuing to Europe since it joined the European Union in 2004. Today, Poland is the security linchpin on the NATO alliance's eastern flank. Strategically placed on Russia's westernmost border, its rapid economic modernization and expansion of its armed forces has catapulted it into 20th place in the list of the world's ah, most I powerful militaries. The, yeah, During the war in Ukraine, it has accepted hurry. more displaced Ukrainian refugees than any other European nation, several million in fact, providing them access to healthcare, education, and employment in the process. Oh, Poland nice. also ranks highly in European military aid to Ukraine, surpassing virtually every European nation save their neighbors in the Baltics. To date, they have sent hundreds of tanks, armored vehicles, and small arms to their imperiled neighbor, likewise wow. opening their roadways to an unending stream of international aid flowing into Ukraine in great numbers. What about the rest of the West? Let's just say Europe's old guard have not emerged from the conflict in Ukraine unscathed. Great Britain is no longer a part of the European Union. Germany's initial reluctance to distance itself from Russian trade deals, pipelines, and natural resources, and the French president's dogged belief in the possibility of a negotiated settlement with Putin, despite Ukraine's wishes to restore its original borders, have seen each country's prestige fall. Poland has wholeheartedly jumped into this leadership vacuum, and is now attempting to warn the wider world about the danger posed by Putin's Russia. In a September 2022 speech, the Polish President Andrzej Duda warned the United States General Assembly that this is not just a regional conflict. Russia's war against Ukraine is a potential source of global conflagration. This war will affect our countries as well as yours, if it hasn't already. This, then, is what Poland is truly afraid of. For decades during the Cold War, it nervously awaited a war between the Soviet bloc and the West, knowing its borders might once again become Europe's bloodlands. Today, the threat remains. Eastern Europe is experiencing its worst conflict since World War II, and from the start, global wow. leaders have warned against any actions that could escalate into a potential World War III scenario. Last November, this was almost what happened. That month, an errant missile crossed over into Polish territory, detonating at an agricultural grain-weighing facility, killing two people. The event, the war's first strike on territory outside Ukraine, prompted a barrage of coverage. Who fired the missile? From where? Why? Everyone knew NATO's famous Article 5 defense clause in the alliance's founding charter meant an attack on one ally was an attack on them all. 
Prudently, as the world leaders waited for answers, world leaders, none more patient than Poland, collected and weighed the evidence, ultimately deciding the event was likely a misfire, and ultimately not enough to invoke Article 5. It may not have sparked World War III, but the strike did prompt Polish officials to redouble their efforts to prepare for such an eventuality. Several months before, an opinion poll found that 84% of Poles expressed fears that military action could spill over into Polish territory. Poland, much like Ukraine, knows it could never face Russia alone without the material and moral support from the West. Could it? It would be impossible to predict how a conflict between Poland and Russia might unfold, nor how much support Poland might receive from NATO and the West. One thing's for sure, Poland isn't waiting around to find out. In the meantime, it's doing its utmost to deter Russia by arming and equipping its armed forces in a way that gives them the highest probability yeah, of military like, success. I'm, I'm Is it overreacting? Right we really don't think so. In many respects, Poland now sees Ukraine fulfilling the role it was once destined to fill, the linchpin of European security, the first wall of defense against a Russian bear railing in its unrelenting quest to fulfill its imperialist ambitions. Poland has claimed it will support Ukraine for as long as it takes. The nation's historic antipathy to all things Russian and Russia's blatant disregard for its neighbor's sovereignty has prompted a thorough rededication to its own defense through an impressive military buildup. Poland already arguably possesses Europe's best army, but after the November 2022 missile incident, it looks set to get even stronger. And it means business. Since the start of Russia's invasion, Poland claims it has experienced its highest wave of recruitment since it officially ended conscription back in 2008. In 2022, it recruited more than 13,500 professional soldiers, about 8% of Poland's total armed forces of 164,000. With the recent announcement to astronomically increase its military spending from 2.5 to 4, possibly even 5% of its GDP, it aims to increase its overall force structure to 300,000 professional soldiers. This will not only dwarf Germany's 1.5% of GDP spent on defense, it will see Poland almost double its army of 170,000. Wow. It is a type of commitment that shows Poland has already become, in the words of a senior US Army official in Europe, our most important partner in continental Europe. Wait, it gets better. The Polish military renaissance means an even tighter defense alliance with the United States, one of its main weapon suppliers. In 2020, the Polish government reached agreements to purchase HIMARS rocket launchers, F-35 combat aircraft, Patriot air defense systems, MRAPs, and hundreds of M1 Abrams tanks to replace its stockpile of the 240 Soviet tanks it sent to Ukraine. It has announced its intention to eventually incorporate American Black Hawk helicopters made in Poland by Lockheed Martin, other multi-role aircraft, and drones to complement its arsenal of American F-16s already in use among its air forces. This is not all. <gasps> Poland is also ordering billions of dollars worth of weapons from cheaper South Korean weapons manufacturers, with a $10 to $12 billion order for 180 K2 Black hey, Panther oh tanks, goodness. 200 K9 Thunder Howitzers, 48 FA-50 light attack aircraft, and 218 K239 Chunmu rocket launchers. And that's only the used gear. Poland's appetite for new arms is even bigger, claimed one journalist. Korea will eventually send Poland 1,000 K2 tanks and 600 K9 howitzers in the coming years. It has also purchased Italian Leonardo attack helicopters to be built in Poland. Talk about being prepared for anything. What Why? could go wrong? Well, some do say Poland's unprecedented defense spending will strain its domestic budget to the breaking point, but its neighbors are hardly complaining. They know the more Poland spends, the safer they'll be. Poland is acting on its stated desire to become Central Europe's preeminent military power. Many doubt whether their vision will ever come to fruition. Polish military stocks are still heavily based on Soviet-era surplus after all, but the recent influx of American weapons like the M1A2 Abrams into the country, its diversification to the other foreign weapon markets, and its emphasis on recruiting and training a new generation of dedicated soldiers certainly paint a promising picture that it might. And in the eventuality that Russian aggression spills beyond Ukraine's borders, Europe can be assured that if any country will be ready to fight, Poland will be chief among them. Yes, But what do you no think? Doubt. Will Poland eventually find itself in an epic battle with Putin's army? If so, are they ready? Let us know in the comments. Um, and don't forget to subscribe for more military analysis. From judging from what I just watched, I don't think Russia is going to plan on being on Poland's bad side because you see all the 
weapons they have and are planning to even purchase i feel like poland is so ready like poland looks so ready and it's even getting better by purchasing all these weapons that i've never heard of before <laughs> i mean guys it's so so amazing how a country can you know prepare for war well the reason isn't far-fetched if you ask me because if a country has been invaded before trust and believe they will double up their security in case of anything in case of anything in the future that's what i believe salute to all the soldiers that kept on being recruited into the army to fight for their country that much number of people in an army it can only say how passionate you know one is for his own country or her own country and shout out to my lady soldiers you guys are really doing amazing because the security of a country is based on what the soldiers do for the country in terms of protection and my salute goes out to all the soldiers that are protecting their country against any invasion or war or something bad like that i can't just even explain how i feel just looking at this video i feel good I actually feel good that Poland is this prepared. I don't know why I'm happy for Poland. <laughs> well, but that's the case, guys. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments. And yes, beautiful people, I've come to the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, do not forget to give the video a fat thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing to the beautiful channel, okay? And also, guys, do not forget to click the bell just beside the subscribe button. Yes, guys, with that being said, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.